Welcome back to the second part of the DC TV side of things. Today we will be covering all of the Disney Plus shows, which would now I guess be HBO Max slash Max shows. Before we get into that though, I did want to admit a mistake I made in the last video. I did post a comment on the previous video making people aware, but I thought I'd include it here. I screwed up with the casting of Tobias Whale. In the comics, I thought he was a white guy as the images I saw of him made him look like a knockoff of Kingpin, hence the D'Onofrio casting. I thought making him an albino black man was simply a switch done by the CW show. My idiotic brain didn't give Tony Isabella and others enough credit and the creators of the CW show way too much credit. So with this, I'll simply make Tobias Whale in this alternate universe, the same actor in our universe, since there aren't enough albino black actors to really choose from. So he will still be played by Marvin Jones III, aka Crondon. Apologies for the screw up, should have done more research. My bad. Moving on to the actual video. I will only be doing TV shows that have either aired or are currently in post-production. We have a very rough idea of what the show will be about and a release date. Since this is connected to our DCCU, a lot of it will be pretty easy in terms of explanation and casting because they've been done before. So let's get into it. Firstly, we have WandaVision, with its counterpart being Zatanna in 2021. First things first, we have Zatanna. Obviously, this wouldn't directly adapt WandaVision because that adapted specific Marvel stories, so it would essentially just be a show about Zatanna. We could borrow some aspects, like maybe she's more so threading the line of good and evil after the death of her father, which has been done before. So I think I would probably go in that direction for this version and simply include any Zatanna supporting characters than a direct adaptation. As you may remember, Elizabeth Gillies played the DCCU version of Zatanna, and so she would reprise her role here. I also have some supporting characters characters that somewhat fall into the cracks of proper counterparts for the characters shown. For the Vision counterpart, I ultimately decided to split the character in two. One would be the character Zatanna is grieving, and one would be the character that would sort of be a love interest and help her along the way. The first would be Zatara, her father, who died before the events of the miniseries, but would appear as a hallucination over the course of the series. He would be played by Tim Roth. And then the other is John Constantine, since they had a thing in the comics off and on, and he would try to help her in his own Constantine Way, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Then you sort of have the plucky comic relief character with Darcy, who in this case would be Arnie, Zatanna's manager, played by Evan Peters. Then you have the Jimmy Woo counterpart with Dale Colton, who is a police detective who worked with Zatanna. He would be played by Randall Park. Then for, I guess, the Monica Rambo counterpart, in terms of someone trying to figure out what's going on with Zatanna and her going down the rabbit hole of darkness, would be The Question, still played by Oscar Isaac. Before we get to the villain, I decided to include some other characters like Jaina Bodhi, a therapist to help with Zatanna's grief, played by Emma Colfield Ford, Sargon the Sorcerer, played by Josh Stamberg, Tracy 13, played by Mackenzie Foy, and another magical user similar to Agatha, but would be good in this case, Madame Xanadu, played by Gillian Anderson. And finally, for the main villain, even though it was technically Wanda herself, it would be Alora, mainly because Agatha is categorized as the main villain, and Alora would also sort of fit the aspects of the character of Agatha, at least the more villainous aspects. She would be played by Katherine Hahn. I just didn't want Zatanna being the main villain, and then getting excused for being the villain because reasons, so I decided to actually include a villain here. The next show we have is Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and the counterpart to that would be Nightwing and Red Hood in 2021. I thought this was just too perfect. Since I already explained that Red Hood is a perfect counterpart to Winter Soldier previously, I thought might as well use him here. I also decided to use Nightwing because he's another Bat Family character. While I wouldn't say Falcon is a jokey character like Nightwing, he does somewhat follow into some aspects of Nightwing, with both taking the mantle from the more popular hero to become their own version of that character. Yes, it doesn't technically fit into the continuity I have set up for myself since these are Bat characters and Superman is the Captain America counterpart, I thought that these characters would overall make more sense in terms of Falcon and Winter Soldier than trying to rack my brain on what Superman adjacent character would fit. So here we are. As well as the fact I wouldn't actually have Nightwing taking the mantle of Batman from Bruce Wayne because that just wouldn't make sense even though it has been done before. So 
just wanted to clear that up. Another case of people already being cast, Nightwing would still be played by Zac Efron, and Red Hood would still be played by Jamie Dornan. Then for the main villain that isn't really an actual villain, I had a bit of a tough time with this one, because Falcon and the Winter Soldier would be connected to Captain America, who in this world would be Superman, as I mentioned. However, I made it so that these are Bat Family characters. So who would the villain be? A discount Superman villain trying to be Superman? Then why would Batman characters go after him? Should I just make him another Batman villain? Or should I at least try to make him sort of like U.S. Agent? At least who U.S. Agent is supposed to be if it wasn't so poorly executed. So I decided to look up characters that were similar and ultimately will use the gunsmith. He's a pretty new character who's only about four years old and has since apparently died. But at the time of this series, he would still be alive and sort of works with what the characters were trying to do with John Walker. But failed miserably because they actually made Walker the only decent character throughout the entire show. He's a soldier and an assassin for hire who is overly patriotic. That kinda works with the very surface level idea of US agent in the show, even though that's not how it was executed. Then for the character of Carly Morgenthau and her merry group of terrorists, I thought the perfect character to use would be Anarchy. They are considered more of an anti-hero than a villain, but there are so many versions of the character that you can simply pick the worst one and make them more villainous like the Flag Smashers are here. The one that would probably work the best is the second Anarchy due to the fact that he was the most villainous despite the fact he is more of a Tim Drake villain and also goes by the name General. Then for the character of Joaquin Torres, I thought that David Zavimb would be a good counterpart as he would later become a superhero with wings who idolizes another superhero, Batwing, just like Torres, who would become the second Falcon. He would be played by Clay Bennett. Unfortunately, I could not find a Congolese actor, so I just used an actor from the show. I hope you understand. Then for a secondary villain who is needed to help the heroes, I decided on Two-Face, since much like Zemo, he appeared before and kind of fits into what this version of Zemo would be. A guy who is definitely a villain, but has knowledge that can help them and was at least a good guy at one point. Do Gray Scott would return to play Two-Face. Then for a Sharon Carter counterpart, it would obviously have to be Barbara Gordon. Then finally, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine's counterpart would be Amanda Waller with Angela Bassett returning to the role. But that's it for this show. Moving on. Next up is a bit looser, but stay with me here. For the Loki counterpart, I have Rip Hunter from 2021 to present. Yes, the more obvious counterpart would be Ares in terms of the main character, since both are villains set in a mythological world, and specifically villains to Wonder Woman and Thor who are each other's counterparts. However, in terms of a character that travels in time, who is in turn part of a secret time-traveling organization to make sure the timeline stays proper, Rip Hunter fits a hell of a lot more. Obviously, Loki's counterpart would be Rip Hunter, played by Daniel Gillies. Then for other characters, you would have Bonnie Baxter, played by Sofia DiMartino. Jeff Smith, played by Jonathan Majors. Yeah, I know, but this was before. Corky Baxter, played by Jack Veal. Matthew Ryder, played by Lou Taylor Pucci. Leary Lee, played by Gugu Mbatha Raw. And Jack Sue, played by Kei Hui Kwan. The villain would be Vandal Savage for the first season, played by Jimmy Smith, and then Epoch the Lord of Time for the second season still played by Andrew Garfield. They would be counterparts, all these characters, to some of the characters in the show, but nothing specific where they need to be stated. Just that it would involve Rip Hunter and company trying to stop Vandal Savage and eventually Epoch from destroying the timeline. You could even introduce characters like Cape Carson and Dan Hunter at some point in the series, maybe played by Owen Wilson and Richard E. Grant. Then finally, I would include a Miss Minutes counterpart with the voice of the ship time sphere they're using that they travel in, played also by Tara Strong. Now we have a rather obvious one with the what if counterpart, Elseworlds from 2021 to present. Pretty easy. While What If was its own comic book series and Elseworlds was more of a sub imprint of DC Comics, both are essentially the same thing where they tell vastly different stories that are contrary to the mainline continuity. Elseworlds is more of an anything goes type of thing, while What If usually takes a singular event, changes one aspect, and explores that different timeline for a single issue and maybe a sequel later on, but I think Elseworlds does still fit 
it into that formula. The main thing about Elseworlds though, how do you exactly do a counterpart for this? Because there's simply no one new to cast because they all return from their previous roles because it's a what if situation. So I decided to do something a little different. I decided to go by the episode rather than by the characters. These would be very loose counterparts of the actual episodes of what if rather than adaptations of Elseworld stories, unless of course an actual published Elseworld story weirdly fits into the context of a what if story we got. There is one casting I will do though, instead of Marvel's The Watcher, I will be doing DC's The Presence. Even though The Presence seems to be a step above The Watcher, with The Watcher being kind of omnipotent deity, while The Presence is essentially God himself. I felt that was the closest, as well as The Presence not appearing in as much as well as other omnipotent beings having more of a place in the dc universe like phantom stranger and specter while the presence is a bit more hands-off most of the time but time to get into the episodes. The first episode is the Captain Carter episode, and I think one that would fit that scenario would be Supergirl arriving on Earth before Superman and what that would entail, since it involves a similar female hero taking the reins over the more popular male hero. Then the next episode is the how much can we possibly shit on Chris Pratt, I mean T'Challa as Star-Lord episode. Best I could do was a simple Aquaman failed to stop Orm in his solo movie. <laughs> The third episode is Hank Pym killing all the Avengers because Hope died, so I decided to do a big alternate story with an adaptation of The Nail, since it follows the idea of how different the world would be without Superman, even though the actual episode is more about the entire Avengers rather than one hero, I still thought it would fit. Fourth episode is the Doctor Strange one with Christina Palmer dying, so best I can do is that Inza Kramer died and Doctor Fate becomes evil. The fifth episode would be a very loose adaptation of Deceased, since that is essentially the DC version of Marvel Zombies. The next is Killmonger saving Tony Stark and him not becoming Iron Man. I think here would be a good time to sort of adapt Flashpoint, but only the story involving Thomas Wayne becoming Batman instead of Bruce Wayne. Since in this case, Thomas and Martha Wayne were quote unquote saved. It would not adapt the entirety of Flashpoint, just adapt this one small story with the rest of the world staying the same as opposed to Flashpoint. The next episode is about Thor being an only child, so I decided on Wonder Woman not leaving Themyscira. The next episode is if Ultron won, the closest adaptation would be if Brainiac won in the third Superman movie. Then finally, the last episode for season one would involve the presence intervening and assembling together the heroes we've seen to stop Brainiac from destroying the multiverse. The second season starts with Nebula joining the Nova Corps, so I decided on adapting the 2004 Green Lantern movie we never got, with Judd Plato, played by Jack Black, joining the Green Lantern Corps instead of Hal Jordan. Considering in hindsight, I do think the movie could have been hilarious, and I feel the premise would be better here as a small what-if episode than having it be the first ever Green Lantern movie, which would have sucked most definitely. But seeing Jack Black as a Green Lantern is just amazing in every way that I had to include it. The next episode is, how much more can we shit on Chris Pratt? I mean, what? What if Peter Quill joined Ego and attacked Earth? I decided on a rather simple one. What if Krypton never exploded, with Clark living his life on Krypton, sort of adapting for the man who has everything, but not have it be a hallucinatory dream by the Black Mercy, just showing us how it would be different. Next is Happy Hogan Saving Christmas. God, was this an actual fucking episode? I ultimately decided on Alfred defending Wayne Manor against the Riddler. Simple enough. Next is the Iron Man and Grandmaster episode, and I decided on what if Batman died during Justice League, how the world would continue without Bruce Wayne as Batman. The next episode then is yet another Captain Carter episode with her fighting the Hydra Stomper. Since Captain Carter is in this case our Supergirl counterpart and the Hydra Stomper was essentially an early version of the Iron Man armor who would be the counterpart to Batman, I decided to have it be a Supergirl versus Batgirl episode, even though it would make little sense for them to fight. But hey, it makes little sense to have Superman and Batman fight anyway, 
so it's whatever. Next is an alternate history episode featuring a Native American original character. I decided to just insert an alternate history Elseworld story here, and I decided on Superman A Nation Divided, which would have Superman be a Union soldier during the American Civil War. The next episode is Hela finding the Ten Rings, so I decided on Ares finding the Anti-Life Equation, which would certainly be a really bonkers idea, but I think it'd be kind of cool too. Next, I decided on another adaptation, but this one has more precedence since the What If episode loosely adapted the infamous Marvel 1602 story. So I decided on Wonder Woman Amazonia because it's another cool concept that could work here. Finally is the Evil Doctor Strange sequel episode with Evil Doctor Fate doing the same exact thing. But that's it, moving on. Another fairly obvious and easy one with the Hawkeye counterpart with Green Arrow in 2021. Even more so adding to the premise of the original version of the character is handing it down to a female counterpart also works here. Since Green Arrow has two different versions you can go with, either Mia Dearden, the second Speedy, or Artemis Croc, which was more so purely done for Young Justice. With that, I'm going with the former, since that fits better anyway in terms of this specific universe and the original counterparts. Connor Hawk also works here because he actually takes the name Green Arrow, unlike Mia, who simply becomes the second Speedy. But the Connor character would probably be too young to get the mantle in this case. I just wanted to mention him because I know people in the comments would as well. Back to people I already cast. Green Arrow would still be played by Paul Wesley and Black Canary would still be played by Katherine Winnick. Then then for Mia Dearden, she would be played by Josephine Langford. Then for the Swordsman counterpart, I have Katana, played by Shioli Katsuna. The Kazi counterpart, Brick, played by Martin Ford. The Yelena Belova counterpart would be Merlin, played by Tony Dalton. And then the Echo counterpart, I decided on Cassandra Kane. She has some similarities to Echo. She has been on both sides of the law, has what is perceived as a disability, is a person of color, and has photographic reflexes just like Echo. Although with Kane, she's mute and not deaf, and that was not because she was born without it, just that her parents didn't teach her how to talk. So that part is a bit rough and might not qualify for a lot of people, which is fair, but the other reasons are the main reasons why I chose Kane as a counterpart. She would be played by Riley Leigh Nillette. Then for other characters, I decided to combine Derek Bishop and Kingpin into one character, as Mia Dearden's father would be the main villain, the King. It made the most sense, right? He would be played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Then I would include Dearden's mother, who is unnamed, so I decided on Phyllis Dearden, played by Vera Farmiga. She would also be abused by her husband, but she would take it out on Mia, which would eventually cause her to run away from home and become a prostitute. With this, her pimp Richard would be included here, played by Zon McLaren, and then a police officer who helps Green Arrow named Andrew Lopez would appear, played by Benjamin Bratt. 